All right, so I've talked to you about the classifications of epithelial tissue already, the different types. Let's review those, and then I'm gonna give you examples of each. You will also see these in lab. So the types we talked about last lecture, which was based on the different categories of categorizing both the cell shape and the number of layers. These were those categories. Simple squamous, stratified squamous, so layers, simple cuboidal. If you think you know these, right, be writing them down. You should write them down maybe before I do. Stratified cuboidal, simple columnar, stratified columnar, and one more. Can you remember the one that's a little different? Pseudo stratified columnar. This one will always be ciliated. That's, it. That's an R, obviously. Um, so you'll see it called that as well, ciliated pseudostratified columnar, because it always has cilia. One more type um, I mentioned as well is transitional. So it looks a lot like stratified squamous, but it's stretchy. Um, it's in the bladder and in ureter. So I'm going to give you examples of these ones. And relate structure to function. So first let's start with, what do you think this is? Well, it tells you there, the picture. Um, these are simple squamous. You'll hear squamous, simple squamous for that type of cell. I say squamous. Simple squamous epithelium. So these are really thin, right? Not only is it one layer of cells, they are thin cells, right? Squamous cells, like they're squatted down. They look like this. So what would these be for? Why would you have this type of epithelial tissue surrounding a lumen or a outside space compared to a different type? So this is going to be for diffusion and transport across um, thin cells. Remember, we talked about one factor that affects diffusion rate is the distance. So this thinner distance here, because of this one layer of thin, short cell is going to allow for faster diffusion. So that's in the lungs for what to diffuse, carbon dioxide and oxygen. They can pass across those hydrophilic portions of the membrane easily. Um, and also the blood vessel. So in places of the blood vessel where you'd have gas transport as well, there's some blood vessels that are simple squamous. The example we're gonna be seeing in lab is going to be the lungs and the alveoli are the air sacs of the lungs. There are a couple other places with simple squamous, um, so some membranes, but this will be the prime example, will be the lungs. Here's actually a nice visual I like that kind of shows this idea of gases having to go from the air sacs of the lungs to the blood vessels, um, which are capillaries in this case. And we actually have four membranes to go across, but we're minimizing that surface area by having this, this tissue type. We don't want layers. We don't want cuboidal cells. So I, um, I, example of structure function. So this is simple squamous. When would we want layers? So when would we want stratified squamous? Well, here are some examples. We'd want stratified squamous if we wanna have kind of more protection. We don't really care about transport as much. We want to protect. So the skin is one example. The skin is actually an organ. Um, we'll talk about it next week, I think, um, and all these structures, the top layer of the skin is epithelial tissue. Um, so these, this is stratified squamous epithelium and 
it's a special type that is um, has keratin, so it's keratinized. So that we'll see more in detail with skin. Um, the point here is that it is stratified squamous, just like the esophagus. Um, so the esophagus is another example of stratified squamous. Other places where you need protection, um, the vagina, um, some of the places where layers of cells are beneficial because if you have damage, so to the skin, um, abrasions, esophagus, eating hot foods, um, certain chemicals, acidic foods, where those top layers can afford to be lost. Um, they are sometimes, we'll talk, sometimes we'll talk about skin growth and how, you know, your skin cells are constantly shedding. And then you're making new cells down from, you can see the stem cells down here. So there's actually growth that occurs. We'll talk about with, with the skin as an example of that. But um, not only are they regenerating, but there's layers just so you're not losing that single layer when you're becoming abrasive with the world. So for protection. Yeah, that's what stratified squamous is for. And we'll see both skin and esophagus in, in lab. Okay, what's this one? This is simple cuboidal. The main example we'll see of simple cuboidal epithelium is the kidney. It's these tubules that are called nephrons that we will talk more in detail in the spring about nephrons. This is where your urine is formed. So eventually it's gonna become urine. Um, your, your blood is filtered and either becomes urine or doesn't, is kept as blood. So these nephrons need to be able to transport things across them. Um, so this is another way of, of having transport. There's a little bit more to these cells because um, they're cuboidal. Some sections of the kidney are, are simple cuboidal. We will look at the kidney as the example, I'm sorry, our simple squamous. We will see kidney as our example when we see it of simple cuboidal primarily. Um, so just to give you some reference, this is our, our nephron here. So here's the lumen of the nephron. This is a longitudinal section right here. It's a longitudinal section of that nephron tube. Here is the apical surface, that means. Here is the basal surface with that basement membrane that attach, attaches it to the connective tissue below. So one single layer. You also will see these tubes cut at a cross section. So you can imagine if you cut those tubes this way, it would look like this. When you see the kidney in lab, you'll see tubes cut both ways. And you can even see some tubes cut this direction in the same picture. But so here is our one slice of nephron tube, lumen, single layer of simple cuboidal epithelium. Um, these cells are going to be able to transport things across them, but also do some secretion. So they're able to do a bit more. It's not literally just transport across. It's also some secretion that needs to occur. All right, what is this one? This is pseudostratified. So you'll notice I skipped stratified cuboidal. We're gonna do stratified cuboidal and stratified columnar as a separate lecture because those are glands. Um, so you'll see those later. Pseudostratified columnar is found in the respiratory passageways. It's also found a couple other locations, but we'll, we'll be seeing it in primarily the trachea, um, right? This tube here, and you've seen this already. Um, so this is kind of a specialized type that is, um, so pseudostratified means it looks like it's stratified. It's like pseudo, kind of. So it's a columnar layer, but it's kind of hard to tell where the cells are. It looks like it's stratified. So pseudostratified. It's always ciliated. So you'll see it called that. Um, a feature of it is often that there's these goblet cells, which we talked about before, these produce mucus. So this all comes together to relate to the function of this type of tissue, which is secretion of what mucus 
particularly, um, the mucus is produced in the goblet cells, as well as this layer below, which is not epithelial. Well, actually it is. Um, so here's some glands, there's mucus here. Um, it's also mucus produced in the goblet cells. Right now, I wanna focus on right this region right here, the pseudostratified columnar is a single layer up on top here. So here is the basement membrane. What is this area up here, right? So this is the lumen of your trachea, both these pictures here. So the mucus is produced, cilia can actually move, um, they're mobile cytoskeletal um, extension. So they're part of the, this plasma membrane like surrounding this, and they are going to move junk out of the trachea. Basically, you want to keep stuff from getting, not, not being in the lungs. So we're going to be able to move dust, potentially food particles, coughing helps with that, um, viruses and bacteria. So it's a, a means of protection of your respiratory system. Okay, that is ciliated, so a stratified columnar, which looks similar to this one. So in lab, I want you to make sure you compare the two and can tell the difference, because this is simple columnar. And depending on where you are in the intestine, this looks more simple or less simple. Um, so this is a single layer of columnar, right, tall cells. Um, here is our lumen. This is the lining. This makes up the lining, right? So here's the lumen. And this is a barrier that's separating the lumen from, okay, so here's the basement membrane. What do we need to be able to do in the intestine? We need to be able to absorb. So we do have to um, have foods, substances cross this way. So we have to have, be able to have absorption, a type of transport um, that's going to happen through the cells because of the tight junctions that are exist in epithelial cells. Um, we also, though, are going to have secretion of stuff. So various um, hormones and mucus cells. So there's also going to be some goblet cells in the intestine, typically. Um, actually, we'll add that because it's not in the picture. So there's some mucus produced to aid in digestion. So that's kind of how I think of why these are columnar. These cells need to be able to do more than just transport across. They're also involved in um, secretion, for example. Nucleus here. What are these things? These are not cilia, they're microvilli. They're smaller than cilia. You actually won't see them as individual components um, unless you go further in than, this is right here is 350, that's about 400X. That's what we look at without oil immersion. It looks just like a pink lining. This, when it looks like this, another word for it is brush border. It looks like the border was brushed. Microvilli, are not mobile, but they're still extensions of the um, cytoskeletal extensions. The purpose of them is going to be to, is to increase surface area for absorption. This is a topic of the spring, so with digestion, but so it helps to make sense of this, right? Why do cilia look different than microvilli? Being able to tell these two tissue types apart um, for the purpose of, of these things. So there's more surface area here for absorption to occur, helps for that movement. I think that's what I wanna say about this. Okay, so let's do a learning check. Answer these, um, and again, I will do glands in a separate video.